Welcome to class, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. This video is for those students who are currently enrolled in our class. We have a, um, a house of horrors, which is an entire house with a thousand defects built under our roof at InterNACHI headquarters and at ProLab down in Florida. And we have um, training sessions there. We have events. Uh, chapter events, lectures, presentations, and also uh, classes where we um, teach individuals, students, how to become home inspectors and be successful at running and operating their own home inspection business. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, uh, this is for a class, but feel free to watch it. Uh, that it's got some good stuff. Hopefully it has some good stuff for you. Um, if you're looking for me or um, anyone on staff, we're on the contact page, and that's at natchiorg slash contact. And if you're looking for live training classes, that's at natchiorg slash training. So in the next hour or so, what we're gonna do is we're going to inspect this home. And we're also um, going to look at a lot of resources that are available to InterNACHI members who want to be trained and certified as home inspectors and who also want to run a successful home inspection business. So get out your notebooks, um, pen, um, cup of coffee, and let's perform a home inspection. And while we're performing an, an inspection, we'll go over the following topics. Um, and if I miss a, a few t topics, just ask your um, certified master inspectors who are trainers at your class and um, all of our instructors are um, certified professional inspectors and certified master inspectors and also they own and operate their own successful home inspection businesses so um, ask them about anything that you need uh, to run a successful home inspection business um, what I'd like to do is show you how I perform a home inspection. Give you a general idea of what it's like to do a home inspection and um, so that you're not overwhelmed because performing an inspection is pretty, pretty straightforward. What's difficult is all the other stuff and we want to make sure that you have all the resources that you need in order to um, be successful. A um, couple things before we get started. InterNACHI is an accredited university for home inspectors. Um, we're accredited by the U.S. Department of Education. We're the only home inspection school uh, accredited by the U.S. Department of Education, and we're also accredited by um, Canada. And to find those accreditations, you can go to natchiorg slash catalog. And if you wanted to um, check out our accreditation, um, it's kind of cool. I'll show you how to do it. You go to the... Um, U.S. Department of Education, um, they have a website that lists all of the accredited colleges and schools and universities in the United States. So you can click look up a school and you type in your favorite school. Um, I prefer InterNACHI and the InterNACHI school pops up right there. Uh, Nautilus Court, South Boulder, Colorado. So that's one way to confirm that you are indeed in the right place to get the right kind of training. If you're in class, um, we have some policies for students. You must prof um, must act in a professional manner, consistent with InterNACHI's educational goals. You must treat staff and fellow students respectfully. We don't tolerate sexual harassment, racist or offensive remarks or disruptive behavior. You may be asked to leave the premises at any time without warning if we determine that this is an appropriate action. And if you do not leave the premises, well, we don't want to go there. So we've got some um, basic policies to treat each other well. Like I said before, performing an inspection is pretty straightforward. It's actually the, the best part of the whole job, doing inspections. What's difficult is building and operating your own home inspection business and being successful at it. One of the things you want to do is assess where you are. If you're not certified yet, 
then you want to make a plan to become certified. You want to set this as a goal. You want to attain this. Certified Professional Inspector. It's a federally registered certification mark. No one on the planet can say that they are a CPI unless you go through the uh, Home Inspection University, the Internet School, and attain that accreditation. So you, once you attain that accreditation, um, you'll receive that logo and you want to use that logo all over the place in your marketing. To determine how to get there, um, maybe with some state regulations or province regulations, you want to visit natchiorg slash pre, P-R-E. It stands for pre-licensing. And you go there and it's a web page of all of the states. So no matter where you're from, we have resources to help you attain certification and licensing or certification or, or some kind of listing um, if there's any kind of local regulations. Remember, local regulations, states or province regulations, overrule anything national. So you want to figure out um, where you are and how InterNACHI can help you. So go to natchiorg slash pre. Two more URLs. And then I want to show you my day as a home inspector. One of the URLs is natchiorg slash everything. natchiorg slash everything. And when you go there, there's 15 steps that we have laid out for you in order to be a successful home inspector. The first step is to join InterNACHI. Let's just go there real quick. We're not gonna go through all 15 steps, but let me show you. So step one is to join InterNACHI. Why do you wanna join InterNACHI? Well, as soon as you become a member, you have access to a world of opportunity opens up for you when you are an InterNACHI member because everything that we have available online is free. No additional cost. And InterNACHI, the InterNACHI school is an accredited university, essentially. So um, everything that we do at InterNACHI is by a national standard. We have um, free online training and continuing education courses. If you're in a regulated state, we'll have those courses approved by the state regulating body. We have a list of recommended home inspector courses, 12 core courses that go over all of the systems and components of a home. We have certification programs. We have a members only forum. We have an online accredited inspector examination. We have a practice test. We have a training app. We have flashcards and membership benefits. Step two, you want to get trained and certified as a home inspector. And that's easy because InterNACHI provides members free online training and certification and in continuing education at no additional cost. Step three is you log into your members only account. That's the portal through which you access everything, including um, free inspection leads. So as soon as you get certified, your phone lights up and that's InterNACHI providing you leads. And then we have a business course geared designed for home inspectors specifically on how to run a successful home inspection business. And chapter 11 of the free online home inspection business course is my favorite chapter because it's all about how to price your inspection services. And it goes on. Step five is about your branding and marketing, your website, membership benefits, how to boost your business, etc. Okay. So that's at natchiorg slash everything. natchiorg slash mentoring is where you can find a mentor online. Mentors ha are um, certified inspectors who have been in business and are successful and have volunteered their time, have agreed to a volunteer their time to other members. So there's a network of mentors out there that you can um, access. Here is my schedule as a home inspector. It's from 7 a.m. to 4.30. I leave my house at 7 a.m. and I come back at 4.30 p.m. And I am completely done. I don't work at night. And I'll show you how to do that. So at 7, I leave my house. And hopefully I arrive at my job without driving too much before um, everyone is scheduled to show up. So I like to arrive early. So if I can schedule my first job at 8, 
My client arrives at eight, maybe with the agent. I have access to the property early. We've scheduled that ahead of time, notified the listing agent and the homeowner that I may arrive a little bit early. And I do that because, well, where I come from, if you're on time, you're late. <laughs> so you wanna arrive early and get ready. Get your tool bag out. Oh, I've got my tool bag behind me here. Um, get your ladder out if you're gonna use a ladder or a drone, if you're gonna do a drone or get your, just get everything ready. And what I do is I inspect the roof because I don't take my client up on the roof. I don't need anybody with me on the roof. I don't want anybody with me on the roof. And so while I'm there early, I'm going to do the hardest thing first. I'm going to inspect the roof. And you may inspect the roof with a ladder, going to the gutter's edge or the eaves. You may not use a ladder and use a, a scope, like an extendable pole. You may use a drone, a pair of binoculars. You're required to inspect the roof. If you're unable to see it, you should disclaim it in your inspection report. Tell your client, I can't see it, I can't access it. So um, me personally, I try to look at the roof first and examine it, observe it. I'm looking for defects, trying to describe its condition to my client in a written format. I'll take pictures and videos. And when my client arrives, I'll be done with the roof inspection and I'll be ready to do the exterior with them and the rest of the house. I want my client to arrive and walk with me as I perform an inspection. And hopefully that starts on time, eight o'clock. I have a second job scheduled at 12 o'clock. In between there's lunch, there's a change of shirts, a little deodorant, a little bit of coffee, and I can do two jobs a day. My goal, ultimate goal is to gross $1,000. And so when I am at eight o'clock, you can see my schedule at eight to 8.15, my client arrives and I'll walk around the exterior with them. I may even do two loops. I'll go around the exterior with my client, just very briefly show them this and that. I'll scoot them into the house because that's actually where they want to be. They want to be in the house measuring, planning renovations, looking at the bathrooms and kitchens and bedrooms and things like that and planning on what to do with their new dream home and how to move in and make it their own. And I inform them when I meet them in the driveway that if I find anything wrong, I'll certainly find them and show them that. Otherwise, I'll catch them while they're in there, right? Very casual and loose. But if they wanna walk with me throughout the entire inspection, I actually prefer that. Because so I'll walk with my client, I'll talk to my client, I'll answer their questions while I'm inspecting, and writing the inspection report using my mobile device that holds my inspection report software. At 8.15 to 9.15, I'm doing the heavy lifting. This is after the exterior. I've done the roof early, exterior. Now I'm doing HVAC, hot water source, water supply, drain waste vent, that's the drain. So it's water coming in and water going out and the, uh, the other plumbing. And then, the difficult stuff of electrical stuff and structure things. So structural components, um, they may be visible or finished. If it's an existing home, um, the basement may be finished. The crawl space may be inaccessible. It could be filled with stuff in it. If the electrical panel is a little dangerous. Don't take the dead front cover off. According to the standards of practice, you're not required to remove the dead front cover to look inside the electrical panel. Um, in relation to the standards of practice, the, the roof inspection, you're not required to walk upon any roof. So um, a couple of things about the, the standards of practice. It is a guide on what to inspect. The standards of practice outlines all the things you're required to inspect and describes all the things that you're not required to inspect. So my job during the day is kind of guided by the standards of practice. I'm not really guessing on what to inspect. I have a process, an inspection procedure, and I follow it for every home. I don't um, follow my client. I don't let my client lead me. I'll allow my client to um, ask questions and identify concerns and bring up issues that they have. But um, my schedule during the day is pretty much tight because I'm all about time management. I have 
two jobs to do. I have to do them well. I have to manage my time. I can't skip over things and I can't run fast through the house. So I have to be thorough and complete. But time management is really important and we can talk about that. So you can see my um, my day is 9.15 to 10 o'clock, that electrical panel and structure, and then 10 o'clock to 10.15, the attic, if there is one. 10.15 to 10.30 is the interior, which includes the bathrooms and garage. 10.30 to 10.45, I'm in the kitchen, and that's where I want to end. I want to finish the report, maybe drag some photos in, provide a summary, go over the summary, maybe print out the summary or send it to my client if you're using um, a cloud-based kind of system. And then I get paid. And my base price, my base price was $396. It's gonna vary depending on your services, your value that you're providing, your geographical area, and the demand for your services that you've jumped up. So the, the greater the value that you provide to your clients, the higher fees that you can demand. So my base price was 396. We added more for distance and age. And then we added ancillary inspections. And there's where the profit is. So I would make $400. And if I showed up at the house and did only a home inspection, I was a little disappointed. We probably were able to, um, we probably missed an opportunity to sell an ancillary inspection service like a mold or a radon or a wood destroying organism test. And that is a service that you can do while you're there that doesn't add a lot of time, right? Your time management, but it adds gross revenue. And InterNACHI has over 45 different types of inspection certifications. So if you wanted to do um, water quality sampling, we have an online, free online training course and certification course for members who want to um, learn that type of stuff and provide that type of inspection service to bundle your, your services. So we would bundle our home inspection with a termite and a radon, and um, we would probably come out of one job with about $650 revenue. But really, that's up to you and your business model. We go for lunch and it arrive at job two, hopefully early, a little bit early. I had a 12 o'clock job and that was um, um, for a couple hours, I would do an inspection and then drop some things off at the office or maybe pick up the next job or see the schedule or say hello and then I'll be home before five. And that was a great career, uh, performing an inspection. You can make a lot of cash performing home inspections. So let's do the inspection. So I arrive early. My first job is at 8, but I arrive a little bit early. So at 7.45 to 8 o'clock, I'm inspecting the roof. And it really only takes 15 minutes at most. And you're not required to walk upon any roof surface, but here are some pictures that I've taken during an inspection. This was an inspection that I performed a while back. And there's the URL, the web address for the standards of practice. Home inspection standards of practice is at natchiorg slash SOP. And according to the standards of practice, you're not required to walk upon any roof surface. Even if it's a flat roof, only one story high, you're not required to walk upon any roof surface unless there's some kind of local regulation that requires you to do so. And there's my ladder, and I'm going to take probably 15, 20, 30 pictures, depending. And I want to take a picture of everything. And some of the things that I, I take a picture of are kind of like that. So that's a picture of me standing on the roof. And I want to put that picture in my inspection report. Why? Because I feel that my home inspection report is the best marketing piece that my company can produce. It's better than a business card, better than a flyer. People just throw those things away. But people will actually take a look at your inspection report. We'll flip through it. And I felt that by the end of my inspection report, the reader should be convinced that I'm the best home inspector in the world. It's kind of that kind of marketing piece. So I want 
these types of pictures in my inspection report to show that I get up on the roof and that you should hire an inspector who does. My, that's a good shot. My competitors may not get up on a roof. So I have to figure out what makes me different from all the rest. That's what you have to ask yourself. What makes you different? Why should you be hired instead of your friendly competition sitting right next to you in class? Um, what makes you special? So your inspection report should communicate that. And why you should be hired? The answer to that question is your brand. The brand is the answer to why should I hire you for your fee instead of someone else, instead of the next person. You're providing essentially the same service. A home inspection is a commodity. You should look that word up, commodity. It means one thing is kind of like the same as the other thing. They're interchangeable. Because we're inspecting according to the same standards of practice, we're following the same standards on how to perform an inspection, and we're all writing a report based upon our observations. So what makes me different from you? How are you going to beat me in the market? Why should someone hire you instead of me? You have to figure that out. One of the ways to do that is list all the reasons why you're different. We all write inspection reports. We're all thorough. We're all trained, hopefully, and certified. So you have to figure something else out. What makes you different? Well, this is one of the things that made me different, our company different. We were roofers, actually. So we felt comfortable getting up on the roof. We were trained to, and so we did. And we communicated that brand through our marketing. So that's the roof inspection. There's a chimney. Um, I can see that the chimney cap is not crowned. It's not diverting water away from the top. So water puddles up there. I don't want that to happen. So we need a chimney professional to take a look at that. I don't want water to go. And it looks like there's rust developing. So I don't want that water puddle to stay there, develop rust and corrosion, then start to leak. So we need somebody to take a look at that. And I'll take a look at the flashing, where the roof meets something else. A vent stack, siding, a wall, um, a skylight, a chimney stack like this. I'll pull up on things, try to see that step flashing there. Look at the valleys. I'm looking for anything like, well, uh, missing or cracked or damaged shingle roof covering. Um, that flashing was not installed properly. So you could see that the wind-driven rain can go to the side and, and um, penetrate into the attic space. And while I'm in the attic, I'm going to take a look. I'm going to remember what systems and components I saw on the roof and conditions and maybe try to connect those two areas. So when I'm inspecting, I think of a house as a system of interdependent parts where one part affects all others. So when I'm on the roof and I see something wrong, I'll try to remember how that may affect other systems in the home. This gutter is filled with water, and it's not raining. So we have a clogged gutter, and there's debris in the gutter. And that's a good shot. That's a money shot, I'd say. That's one of the reasons why I'm hired. That gutter is 20 feet in the air, and um, maybe the homeowner doesn't realize that that gutter needs to be cleaned. Standing water. There's a gable vent, chimney. So I have two defects, right? There's a, a defect at the top of the chimney cap that nobody can see. I have a clogged gutter, and I have a flashing def defect uh, around uh, a vent pipe. There's my ladder. Other parts, ventilation. Other parts of the roof I can see from the ground. Defects. So in the standards of practice, there's one particular defect that's actually described, and you're required to report upon it if you observe it, and that's a material defect. That is a specific issue 
with a system or component that has a significant adverse impact on the value of the home or poses an unreasonable risk to someone. If you see a material defect, let me go back. If you see a defect and you deem it to be material, it should be in the report according to the standards of practice. So that's a defect that you both observe and deem to be really bad. What about all the other stuff? Well, your clients are going to want to know about the other things, such as, um, well, the defect on the chimney stack that was puddling up with water. It's not going to hurt anybody, and it's not going to have an adverse impact on the value of the home. It could be fixed for probably a few hundred dollars. That's a major defect. You have to describe, that's a major problem, an issue, something. You have to describe these issues or conditions to your clients. And what we recommend, it's not a requirement, is to use InterNACHI's glossary at nachi.org slash glossary, glossary of terms, definitions. And in, in that glossary, there are four different types of defects. We went over the material one. The next one down is major defect. That's a problem that you need to hire a contractor for. The next one is a minor defect. Um, that's something that a homeowner could probably do. Or you may need to hire somebody, like a dirty air filter, um, changing the batteries of a smoke detector. Cosmetic defect is a flaw or a blemish. Home inspectors are not required to report upon those types of defects or problems like a, a stain in the carpet or a, a dent in the closet door or a, a loose knob or a strike plate or something like that. But you may want to do it for your client anyways and throw it in the report because your clients, your clients are going to expect you to um, observe, look for problems um, in addition to material, material defects. ADM, I'm done with the roof inspection. I'm also done with writing the roof section of the report. And that's how I managed my time and how I was able to do two inspections a day efficiently and thoroughly. I just loaded up my mobile device with an inspection software that works on mobile devices. And as I inspect, I'm taking pictures, I'm doing video, and I'm also choosing sentences that I want to insert into the inspection report. And those sentences describe an observation of a defect. And it usually starts off something like, I observed a defect at this. Like, um, I observed a defect at the top of the chimney stack where water is apparently puddling up during a rainstorm. Ideally, all stacks divert water off of the top of the chimney stack so we don't have any water intrusion problems. Correction and further evaluation by a chimney expert is recommended. And I would, that's the sentence that I select on my device. I tap it and it goes right into the report and I snap a picture or I can attach a picture later and a video I can attach a video later that's um, associated with that comment. And so that's what I do. I go around the entire place and that's basically the process. You observe, you communicate, and you take pictures. You don't have to take pictures. There's nothing in the standards of practice that requires you to um, take pictures or video there's nothing in the standards of practice that actually requires you to use a flashlight. The word flashlight doesn't even appear in the standards of practice. But there are some things that are just going to make you a better inspector. So um, writing a report using a mobile device helps you. It helps you also reduce liability. It helps you um, with um, reducing the amount of mistakes that you may make. We all make mistakes. But if you use a checklist essentially on your phone as a guide uh, it will help you make fewer mistakes let's say and it helps you uh, manage your time and you're actually writing the report as you inspect so write your inspection report as you inspect that's a good recommendation 
8 o'clock to 8.15, I'm going to inspect the exterior. It only takes several minutes, actually. It's pretty easy to do. Walk around the house once or twice, and you're checking everything that the standards of practice requires you to inspect. What does the standards of practice require me to inspect? Let, let's just go there, right? Let's just go to nachi.org SOP. And at the SOP, let's scroll down and click the exterior section. And here's what you're required to inspect. The inspector shall inspect the exterior wall covering materials, that's the siding, eaves, soffit, fascia. You probably did that when you were looking at the roof. A representative number of windows. You can't inspect them all, especially second or third floor windows. Just a representative number of them. All exterior doors. That's easy to do. Flashing and trim, if you can see that. Adjacent walkways and driveways. Stairs, steps, stoops, stairways and ramps. Porches, patios, decks, balconies, carports. Railings, guards, handrails, and vegetation, surface drainage, and retaining walls and grading of the property where they may adversely affect the structure due to moisture intrusion. And then in the report, it says you have to describe the type of exterior wall covering materials, and you shall report as in need of correction any improper spacing between intermediate balusters, spindles, and rails. That's the standards of practice. That's an excellent guide. For you. You should use the standards of practice as a template within your inspection report that you hold in your hand as a guide on what to inspect. In that software, you can also leave uh, reminders and notes for you, like what are the 10 steps to inspect a garage door opener, right? That's attached to a garage door. So remember, step stoops walkways and all that good stuff and ex exterior grading, that's why I'm inspecting. So it looks like the downspouts divert water far away from the house, that's good. There's a radon system there. If you wanted to check the radon system, we have a standards of practice, we have a training and certification course, we have a standards of practice just to inspect a radon mitigation system because maybe that radon mitigation system is old and it wasn't installed uh, well, it was installed according to a standards of practice back then, but those standards have improved now. So you can check the existing radon system according to modern standards. In fact, that's how I handle all houses. I inspect a home without any regard to the age of the home. So if I see space between spindles of an exterior guard that's more than four inches apart, that's the standard, I'm going to call it out as a major defect because I don't want children to fall through. If you say that and a real estate agent or the homeowner says, oh, well, that's grandfathered because the home was built according to code back then. Well, that's the world we live in. Most defects that we observe are because the home was built according to old code back then. We're not code inspectors. We're not code officers. We're not from the township. Uh, code building uh, uh, department. We're home inspectors. And you can side on your client's side um, in relation to safety. So another exam example would be if you're inspecting a home that's um, built before GFCIs were even uh, developed, created, and required, you can make that recommendation that all bathroom receptacles in this home, let's say it's a Victorian home that was built in 1850, um, all bathroom receptacles should have GFCI protection. That's not unreasonable. And it has nothing to do with code. It has everything to do with modern standards, modern building standards, modern expectations for safety. So our recommendation is to consider inspecting a home without any regard to its age. And once you realize that, now you're kind of like putting things together. You have a standards of practice that requires you to do the absolute minimum things. You can exceed the standards of practice. You are not required to find all the defects, but only those that you both observe and deem to be 
material defects. And you're not a code inspector. And you don't care when the home is built. This kind of frees you up. This is why I said in early in the, in the video that performing an inspection is really easy. It's pretty straightforward and it's a lot of fun, right? The difficult stuff is running a business. So don't be overwhelmed by all the knowledge that you may feel you need to gain. It's, there's a lot out there to learn and you never stop learning. But we have a set of courses. We have a, an accredited home inspector certificate program that all home inspectors should take. It's accredited by the US Department of Education. We're a university. And you can get CEUs, actually, and transfer them to another university. And there, those courses in that program, there's 12 of them. And those are the core courses that you need to take. They go over all the systems in the home. Let's continue. There's the exterior covering materials. It's vinyl siding. So I'm going to walk around and look for missing stuff, damaged stuff. Maybe the grill got too hot and too close to the vinyl siding and melted the vinyl siding. I'm going to look for vegetation. I'm going to take pictures of inspection restrictions. There could be infestation right behind that flower bed and that vine there. And I wouldn't be able to report upon it because I'm required to report upon defects that I both observe and deem to be material. And I, if I can't observe it, if I'm doing a home inspection and I'm in this room right now and there's a defect above my head and I don't observe it, that's beyond the scope of my visual inspection, right? I'm not required to report upon defects that are behind that panel back there where it says everything you need all in one place. If it's not observed by me, I can't report upon it. You're not required to find all the defects in a home. It's impossible. You're only required to report upon those defects that you both observe and deem to be material according to the standards of practice. Whew. Once you know that, it's fun. Practice on your own home. If you're new, you should be practicing on your home with software. Inspect your own home over and over and over and over and over again. Ten times at least. I did that. I remember. The first one was very different from the tenth one. I was a lot better on my 10th one. I was faster. I saw more. I was able to comment more. I was able to be more detailed, more thorough. So practice. The Internet G's, uh, the Internet G Home Inspector and Home Inspector uh, Certificate Program requires you to do four pretend inspections and write four reports using our software. It's a free online software for all home inspectors. It's a free uh, inspection report software. And you can use the Internet G House of Horrors if you're visiting us to perform that inspection if you wanted to. Just inspect the House of Horrors four times. Four times. Inspect your home, your friend's home, everybody actually. As part of a, a marketing strategy, everyone in your neighborhood should know that you're the home inspector. Like I haven't performed an inspection for a client, a paying client during a real estate transaction for years, but everybody in my neighborhood knows that I'm the inspector. And when there's a weather event, like we had heavy rains, everyone knows that I have the moisture meter and the infrared camera, and they call me up. They'll even stand in my driveway. My neighbor just a few months ago was standing in my driveway as I pulled up from work because her skylight leaked and she hired a roofer and she wasn't sure if the roofer was mm, giving her the information in an honest way. So I had to follow up on a contractor. You, I had to oversee a contract. And home inspectors should be able to find those types of um, opportunities. We shouldn't be just inspecting homes during a real estate transaction, but we should be inspecting homes because homeowners need us. Internet actually believes that all homes, every home, should be inspected every year. Every home should be inspected every year as part of a homeowner's routine home maintenance plan. And taking that kind of opportunity, you can start marketing your services to anybody. Tell everyone that you're the home inspector in your neighborhood. So as I inspect, I'm moving things with my hand. That's a great shot because there's dense vegetation. I really can't see anything. A picture's worth a thousand words. Everything looks really good. I don't see any 
trip hazards. There's a loose step there that's settled that needs to be fixed. It detached from the deck. The deck surface is okay. The space between the spindles is too far apart, large enough for a child to fall through. And there's a carpenter bee. Ooh. So in my bag, oh, sorry about that. In my um, inspection training, oh, sorry, inspection bag, I'm holding it right here. I've got a lot of tools here. And inside my bag that I bring out to the front door when I start my inspection, I have a, um, a complete fill guide to wood destroying insects. And you can buy this and any kind of resource for home inspectors, including uh, and especially home inspection tools from inspectoroutlet.com. Inspectoroutlet.com, one word. And in here, um, we go to the carpenter bee section. And this helps me describe to my client um, what we're looking at. Like this is the carpenter bee illustration. And this is a field guide, so it's all laminated. And this is what they look like, right? And they drill holes like that. It's kind of cool. And that's exactly what I'm seeing there. So see that in my field guide and see that hole in the board of the deck? Yeah, same thing. Carpenter B. I look for, I'm not a licensed pesticide applicator. If you're going to spray pesticide, you need to be regulated by the state in the United States. Um, but I'm going to look as a home inspector for anything that damages wood, including moisture mold and bugs. So I'm going to report to my client. That's the kind of value that I bring to my inspection. If I can overwhelm my clients with value, I can demand higher fees. In fact, that should be a goal in your business. How are you going to remember your brand? Your brand is who you are. What kind of value can you bring to your client? What you should overwhelm your clients with so much value, they're choking on it, and they have to hire you. And it almost doesn't matter what you charge. Right? That's where you want to be. That's how you're going to distinguish yourself from all the rest. You have to figure out what special things you do. What problems of your clients do you solve? What actual benefits do you provide to your clients who hire you? If you could communicate that, that's marketing. If you can develop that brand, those are the reasons why you are hired. So one of the reasons why I'm hired, as we've seen so far, is I get up on the roof, right? And I also have other resources so I can look for anything that damages wood, even bugs. And I use software so that I can immediately provide you with a summary after the inspection ends, immediately. I can get, send you a summary. I can send you the entire report, actually. It's one of the values that I provide. So taking a look at the rest of the deck, I try to get under there. If I'm restricted, I'll put it in the report that I can't crawl all the way, that the inspection was limited or restricted. And that dense vegetation there that's a restriction to my inspection as well. It's a visual only inspection. It's like a home inspection is like putting both hands behind your back and just walking around the house. You don't have to touch anything. You don't have to move anything. You can use normal operating controls like the thermostat, but it's a visual only inspection. You don't have to measure anything. I think in the attic, we ask you to, according to the standards of practice, to approximate the depth of the insulation, the thickness of the insulation. Here's um, a condenser unit. On the outside, compressor, fins look good. It's on a good base, you can see that. I'm not required to um, estimate the age of the unit or the size of it. Um, I'm not doing a delta T or some other kind of measurement of the home and the ductwork and anything like that. But I will take a picture of the manufacturing label and I may include it in the report, but usually I don't, I just hold it back. If I need to refer to it, at least I have it. So that's in good shape. The suction line is insulated. There's a disconnect within sight. Got some vines and vegetation near the unit that's crawling up the siding. 
downspouts are diverting water away from the house. There's the driveway. Driveway looks good. There's um, my truck. It was called Peach Inspections. Um, I'm not sure if you have uh, decided upon a name for your company, but um, you want to think about that as well. And it should help communicate your brand a bit. It should, it should mirror. It should work well with your brand. So um, Peach was um, an idea. And uh, we came up with it because we wanted to work with real estate agents. And it worked well with real estate agents. Most real estate agents in our area were um, female. And a peach is kind of like effeminate, soft, fuzzy, you know, delicious. And so it kind of worked with our brand and our message, how we reached and communicated to other professionals. We were approachable, especially for first time home buyers. And we also use that brand to market our services by delivering peach candy and fresh baked pastries, peach pastries. We hosted real estate meetings. So I would go to the bakery, get some peach pastries and deliver them to the office manager before their meeting and stuff business cards and flyers and things like that around or in the box and had napkins and forks and knives. And then I'd leave. I didn't do any presentations. I just fed everybody. And that, or I delivered baskets of peaches actually in season to real estate offices. And I didn't go for the really big offices. I went for the small offices because they hardly ever get any attention. So you want to think about your company, your domain name, your, your company name, your brand, the way you send out that brand through messaging and marketing. And all of those topics are covered in our free online home inspection business course that we mentioned earlier. When I do one system, when I inspect one system, I, I tend to bump up into other systems. Remember, a house is a, uh, a system of interdependent parts. Other systems bump into and interact with other systems. So I'm doing the in exterior inspection, but I bumped into already the um, air conditioner unit and what? This is the electric meter. So while you're inspecting with your mobile device, it's pretty easy to jump from here to there from one system like the exterior to the electrical system and make comments that way. There's the grounding wire, cable, frost-free hose bibs. There's water running there. There's the old radon system. And there's the dryer vent. And it's clogged. So that's a fire hazard. We need that to be cleaned. Major defect. All exterior receptacles are GFCI protected. That's my GFCI tester. And then the garage door opened up for me, so I inspected the garage. I had that opportunity. We want the floor sloped, all the walls um, sealed up, no breaches in them. All garage receptacles are GFCI protected. There's 10 steps to inspect a garage door opener using normal operating controls. There's the laser beam. The drywall looks good. There's some inspection restrictions because of the storage and the vehicle. There's the clean out pipe and there's a breach in the firewall. So if there was a fire in the garage, the fire department likes about a half an hour before that fire breaches the firewall around the garage and enters the house. So this is a fire hazard, easy to fix. It's a fire hazard, but easy to fix. It's going to be a defect in my um, in my inspection report, but it's an easy fix. And so that's one of the things that you want to um, be aware of, how you communicate problems. So this is a fire hazard, sounds terrible, but it's an easy fix. Get a little piece of drywall, tape it, a couple layers, paint it up, and you're good to go, right? So my approach was always pretty friendly. No matter what the defect was, I smiled, I showed my client what it was, maybe gave some informal off the record advice on how it can be fixed. And then my client, uh, that was written in the summary, and then my client took action upon that. They could fix it themselves when they move in, they could ask the, the homeowner to fix it. Sometimes that isn't the best option because the homeowner will 
they're moving out, so they're going to fix things as fast and as cheap as possible, or they can negotiate on the price or something like that. At least they are aware of the defect that I found observed. So, um, and that also comes to a point where um, you may have heard that um, home inspectors are criticized as being deal killers. Um, no such thing. If you think about it, there's hardly anything, in, in my opinion, there's hardly anything a home inspector can say that can uh, kill a deal. Why? Because your client has spent, invested an enormous amount of time and effort in finding their dream home. And this is their dream home. It's in the right neighborhood, the right school district. It's the right price. They have qualified for a loan. Oh, they found the right home. They found the right real estate agent and the bank and the value the adjuster has gone through. They've made a bid. It was accepted. This is the like the last minute, last thing that they can do. They just want to know, is there anything major that they're not aware of, that they should be aware of? And it's hardly, there's hardly anything that you could say that would, that would not, that would prevent them from moving into their dream home. They're in love with the place. When they're emotionally tied, I felt that m when my client was emotionally tied to the home, they're moving in no matter what. And if it's a five thousand dollar deck collapse defect, they're going to get that negotiated or fixed or something because the house is just amazing. Big deal, you know. A few thousand dollars compared to a five hundred thousand dollar purchase is relatively uh, irrelevant. What's relevant is um, they found their dream home after all this work and they're gonna move in, right? So once you know that as well, again, performing an inspection is pretty straightforward and it's a lot of fun. It's the best part of your job, running a successful home inspection business. It's difficult if you don't have the knowledge and skills of the business and marketing sides. So. Going through a home inspection like we are right now is pretty fun, but the difficult stuff is all the other stuff. And we have that business and marketing stuff, the courses, the training, the resources, the documentation, the agreements, the contracts, the legal side of things, all of that is available to InterNACHI members. Um, so we have everything you need all in one place, just like the sign behind me says. So 8.15, I'm done with the exterior. 8.15 to 9.15, we're gonna do the heavy lifting. HVAC, hot water source, water supply, drain waste vent, plumbing. HVAC, it's a heat pump. There's the um, refrigerant lines coming in. I take a picture of the manufacturing label. It's essentially a toaster oven at the top with some breakers and large electric line. It produces condensate, goes into a pump and is discharged outside. There's a high uh, efficiency air uh, filter on the unit. Open it up, it's a little dirty. There's a humidifier in this uh, geographical area. Um, they humidify the air in the wintertime when it's dry air. There's the control there. That filter needs to be replaced, just like the air filter of the furnace needs to be replaced every year. There's some duct work. The basement has been finished. It has one or two um, supply registers. We don't measure the distribution. It could be unbalanced. I take a picture of the service record. If it hasn't been serviced and cleaned within the past year, um, that's in the report. Plumbing, water going out. Inspection restrictions, I can only see these pipes here, PVC pipes. Can't see all the other stuff because the basement is finished. Water supply, water coming in through a shutoff valve. Pressure regulator, check valve, water meter, no leaks. However, where the water line comes through the foundation, there are water marks. That hole through which that pipe passes has been patched, it's sealed up. That's good, but there are water marks on top of that patch. And below that, in the water stream, water marks stream down the foundation. And below that, there's mud and mud puddles. So possibly, likely, during a heavy rainstorm in the past, Water has come into the basement, water moisture intrusion or water penetration, and maybe the seller doesn't even know it. In my experience, most homeowners don't even know about defects that exist in the home. So you come 
around and in a couple hours you find a bunch of defects like this and uh, everyone is kind of surprised. So I've got a moisture meter. It's not going to register anything because it hasn't rained in a while. It's all dry. But you can tell that there has been water puddling there and it has brought in mud. And the water has evaporated and left the mud there and water stains. So it's an easy fix. Water moisture is a major defect. Uh, moisture intrusion, sorry, is a major defect. And it can be easily fixed with a sealant. So we're going to need a contractor. So I would call that a major defect. Water pipes, copper, valves, nice. Hot water source, there's the tank. It's electric, dated, size, manufacturing label, cold water coming in with a shot off valve, TPR valve. You know, there are certain things you can look for at a TPR valve. And remember, you're not a code inspector, but there's like 14 things to look at that's related directly to a hot water tank's temperature, temperature pressure relief valve. What are those 14 things? Well, you can put those 14 things in your notes or reminders or your checklist that you hold in your hand. And you can simply just check all those things that the TPR valve should conform to the standards. For example, one of them is um, it should discharge to the floor in the same room as the hot water tank. It can't discharge vertically, it has to discharge down to the ground. That's three things, right? So where do you find those things? Well, in the International Plumbing Code or International Residential Code. And those codes are online. For example, the 2018 IPC International Plumbing Code, section 504.6, describes the requirements for discharging piping from a TPR, a temperature pressure relief valve. And you can click that link and go to the codes. The International Residential Code, the ICC, International Code Council, has graciously put their codes online for the public to read, for their home inspectors to refer to. Uh, let's take a look at the electrical panel. And the electrical panel should only take a few minutes. There's the electrical panel. Two fingers means 200 amps. There's the main disconnect. There's no more room. That's what that means, a cross finger. Every breaker should be specifically identified. It's not really identified that well. There's the cable. You're not required to remove the dead front cover. It's hazardous, could be fatal. Don't do it. I did it and I'm looking for, when I do that, I look for uh, double taps like this. So I have two hot wires essentially under one breaker that's not designed for that. And I want to find um, another defect, a common defect, would be a big fat breaker on a small gauge wire. I'm looking for that problem as well. Um, GFCI protection, code, label, and now I go to structure. Pretty easy. The basement is finished, so that's an inspection restriction. I'm not required to remove drop ceiling tiles, but I kind of do. I move them, I see what's going on up there. There's a lot of insulation in my way and ah, moisture. So in my tool bag, I've got, these are two favorite tools. Um, one of them is the moisture meter that's in the picture there. And this is called a Hydro Shark. Uh, inspectorcoach.com, her store, inspectorcoach.com. She has a store, an online store. You can buy a Hydro Shark there. And it's, um, I've always used this, it's really cool. It's, um, it's a moisture meter. We don't measure moisture or measure anything really, but this, um, tool, if it's wet, gives me an audible signal and a and a light, and tells me um, if there's something wet in the carpet, and I use it to, um, you know, poke through the carpeting and poke through the the padding to see if there's any moisture there. And then the other tool I use is it's actually a gardening tool. It's a, th a three tine hoe. There's three tines. I heat up one and straighten it out so I can poke things with it and grab insulation and it's extendable so I can reach really well and uh, that's handy when you are moving insulation at a band rim joist area and putting it back. So I take pictures of that. We'll just go through the basement. Sump pump bucket that was sealed up, there's no sump pump. 
there is water intrusion, so they may want to consider. And there's the, a radon fan uh, pipe. And no uh, meter, no label. Uh, has some problems with it. Band rim joist at the deck. The crawl space is just filled with stuff. Missing insulation here and there. No major defects. Attic insulation. When I when I get to the attic, it's about 10 o'clock, two hours in. I feel like I'm almost done. Because when I get to the attic, I've done all the heavy stuff. All the difficult stuff. The roof, the exterior, HVAC, plumbing, hot water source, structure, electrical. I got all that done. Now I'm in the attic. I can't walk around. You're not required to walk around any attic without a floor. Um, if there's a floor, great. Um, but if there isn't, be careful. The attic floor is covered with insulation, 10, 12 inches thick of insulation. That's pretty good. It's disturbed here and there by contractors installing phone and cable. And those areas are heat loss, energy loss areas. Um, and they could air seal and insulate that. Ventilation trays that's good there's a ridge vent remember so it all looks pretty good I'm looking for roof leaks structural problems anything like that but there are open gaps in the insulation that's just a simple heat loss area ever grab that insulation and pull it back and see black stuff on it that's not mold that's not soot that's dirt because of air leakage um, air is moving through open gaps into the attic space, escaping conditioned air, escaping and carrying dirt with it. And that fiberglass, we call it filter glass, it's really just a filter. It doesn't stop that air movement. Air sealing stops the air movement. The filtering, uh, the filter glass um, captures that dust. So don't get confused on that. And I enjoy this kind of um, observations and commenting for my clients because I'm trained as a Internet certified home energy inspector. It's one of those ancillary inspections and additional certifications that you can attain for free through Internet program. And now you can comment well and make comments intelligently on energy issues. For one is missing insulation on the attic access panel. There it is there. Laundry it only takes a couple minutes inspect it. Bathrooms, I do the same thing for every bathroom. I inspect the, the toilet, flush the toilet, try to move it with my side of my foot, um, run water, hot and cold water at the sink, look at the traps and the valves, run water at the tub, tub drain, shower, turn them all on at the same time, look for functional flow, GFCI protection at the bathroom receptacles, light, uh, bathroom exhaust should go outside window. Every bathroom is the same. Same inspection procedure over and over. And also representative number of windows, representative number of doors, wall receptacles, lights, fans, fixtures. So that's the half bath on the first floor. Doors. There's the fireplace. You're, if there's a fireplace, you're in, uh, required to inspect it. One of the things that you inspect is the damper. Open and close the damper if it's accessible. Not required to inspect the interior flue, but I may take a shot with it with my camera. And there's the laundry. Electric. The hoses are not pressure tested. We need GFCI protection in the laundry. There's a missing catch pan underneath the clothes washer. And then I end up in the kitchen. That's where I like to end up my inspection report as well. Uh, review. Garbage disposal, sink, hot and cold water, GFCI protection is needed. I turn the dishwasher on. The island should be secured to the floor, GFCI protection. Dishwasher, I'll run a, a short cycle while we're there. I'll turn on the stove and range elements and oven and microwave, little microwave detector. And that's about it. I'm done with the inspection. And I provide a summary with my client. And... I can do the entire report there, maybe add some additional photos to my report, tighten it up a little bit, and send it out to my client with a click of a button. And the report kind of looks like this. There's the summary. No pictures, but a summary. There's a table of contents of the report. And then the pictures. There are a lot of pictures on every page, maybe four to nine pictures. Lots of pictures. Anything that's red is a defect. Anything, minor, major, material, they're all red. Everything else is blue or black. The headings are blue 
and the text is black. And then I put illustrations in the inspection report as well. And you can get those illustrations from InterNACHI's illustration gallery, gallery of illustrations that members can download and insert into the report and makes it really robust and looks really good. And then I swipe a credit card and I'm on to my next inspection. So I have some homework for you. Four URLs that I enjoy recommending to students. It's natchiorg slash everything, where there's 15 steps to run a successful home inspection business. natchiorg slash mentoring, where there's a network of experienced inspectors who are volunteering their time to teach others. Inspector Coach is a great service. If you want to assess where you are, set goals of where you want to be, and make a customized plan to get there. And we're all on natchiorg slash contact. There are about 30 full-time staff members at InterNACHI, and they all work for you. It would be impossible to hire that many people to run, help run your business. For example, there are seven highly talented professional marketing consultants, illustrators, and designers in the member marketing team. I would call up the director of the marketing team and ask Jessica, she's a director of member marketing, what can this department, what, what can the member marketing team do for my business? How can you help me? So I encourage you to go through the online courses. Um, I'm also um, doing webinars on Natchi TV, live online webinars. Um, we have a YouTube channel, we have a Facebook channel to connect to other inspectors. We have an online forum. We have a lot of resources available to you. If you feel overwhelmed, don't. There's plenty of people on staff who are um, available and willing and able to help you. We want to serve you so that you can be a successful home inspector and um, have fun being a home inspector. It's a lot of fun performing inspections and don't get overwhelmed because um, everything you need to be successful is available to you. If you can't find it, well, contact somebody, reach out to us, and we'll help you. Um, so I'm glad. I hope you found it valuable. I took you through an inspection that I did, and um, I want to leave you with those two URLs, natchiorg slash contact, natchiorg slash training. And if there's anything you need, feel free to reach out to us. My name is Ben. Hope you have a great time at the class, and um, have fun. Bye.